So it's a new year. And just like a lot of you out there, I'm really excited to continue to grow more as an investor and put my portfolio in a position to not only make more money in the long term, but to also pay me more in annual dividends in comparison to how I did last year. And in this video, I'm going to go over five different stocks that I want to focus more of my $30 a week on this year, starting this month in January. And hopefully throughout this video, you'll notice that I'm trying my best to focus a little bit more on the data, at least on a basic level rather than go off just the basic rule that I've always had of investing in what you know, even though I think that is a great starting rule for new investors, at least in the beginning. But anyway, before we get into the five stocks I want to focus more on this year, starting this month, I do have an honorable mention, and that honorable mention is ticker symbol SCHD. I've said so many times on this YouTube channel that if someone that was new to investing came to me and asked, hey, what would you suggest be the very first investment that I make in the stock market? I would say an exchange traded fund, because not only are you getting automatic diversification, which could increase your chances of having a more stable portfolio for the long term, but most ETFs also also pay passive income in the form of dividends. And that is basically what SEHD is doing. Its goal is to track dividend stocks in the Dow Jones that I believe have a history of paying their shareholders dividends between 10 to 15 years. And one cool thing that I've actually learned from a lot of the companies under the SCHD umbrella is that their free cash flow is high enough to where they can consistently take their cash and pay their shareholders off in dividends, which is probably the reason why they not only can consistently pay their shareholders dividends, but also increase them. And that's also a reason why SCHD has been able to pay their shareholders dividends since 2014. But even though this is a very stable ETF, which can be attractive, I put this as an honorable mention for the same reason, it's stability. If you look at last year, it did grow in share price, but I think it grew only 0.8%, maybe 1%. And just like you probably, and a lot of you guys out there, I'm still in a position where I'm fairly young enough to where I can make more risky decisions in the stock market by investing in things that are a little bit more volatile and have a potential possibility of making me more money in the same period of time as SCHD would. But regardless, I'm still gonna put money into SCHD, but I'm gonna focus a little bit more on another ETF, being VOO. VOO tracks an index of the S&P 500, which we all know is pretty tech heavy, which I appreciate because they're gonna focus more on companies such as Apple, Nvidia, and Microsoft. And I really like that exposure because these are companies that have a history of some crazy long-term profits. Now, if you compare VOO to SEHD, of course you're gonna see over the past five years or even the past year that VOO's overall share price profit gain is significantly higher than SEHD. But you'll also see that the dividend yield of SEHD is a lot higher than VOO. Granted, you definitely, as I've said before, need to keep in mind the share price itself, despite the fact that VOO is a lot lower, it pays over $6 a year, whereas SEHD, I think is a little over two. At the same time, however, you can still buy three shares of SEHD and make just about the same amount in one year as you would in VOO, you're just losing the opportunity for more profits. And even though volatility is a pro, it's still kind of a con as well. It's something I have to keep in mind to where, since expectations for a lot of these companies under its umbrella is really high, if it doesn't meet that expectation in our eyes, then it's possible there could be sell-offs and the price goes down, which would affect the ETF, but it's still a position that I'm willing to take for this year. If you've watched a lot of my videos in the past, you probably heard me say that Apple is one of, if not my favorite dividend investing stock out there. And that's just because of the role that they played as a tech company within society for the past couple of decades and how that impacts their consistency with dividends and their consistency with overall growth. And it hurts for me to say this as someone that's had a Samsung phone for the past decade, but not only are their phones extremely popular, probably the most popular phones out there, but the ecosystem they have is probably the best I've ever seen. And the way all the technology in that ecosystem work together is amazing. And because of that, They've been able to consistently increase their dividend payout for the past 12 years on top of growing their share price by over 350% over the past five years, including almost 50% last year. However, one thing I did notice, something I'm still learning over time, is that their net sales and operating income fell between quarter three of September 2022 and quarter three or September of last year. And that could potentially make the stock look a lot better than what the company actually is. But however, this is one of seven of the magnificent seven stocks out there and all those stocks have super high expectations just because of what they've done for society in the past. So I'm not really concerned about that. Plus, I also learned that they have a high cash balance, which makes me really excited because that shows me they're gonna be able to still consistently pay their shareholders dividends and also 
increases the chances of them increasing those dividends. Speaking of dividends, Realty Income has been one of my favorite dividend investments, especially because they've been paying their dividends to shareholders every single month for the past 31 years. However, as far as overall growth, that's kind of been another story. Last year, their share price actually dropped 9%. And if I had to guess, that had a lot to do with the Federal Reserve increasing interest rates all of last year up until the very end. And they had an announcement of a potential merger they're gonna have with Spirit Realty, which didn't really go well as far as its response in the stock market. But now with interest rates at a pause and the possibility of them decreasing throughout this year, it makes borrowing money for businesses a lot cheaper so they can do certain things like real estate, which is where realty income would come in. As far as its capital gains, we'll see what happens based on how interest rates do, but I know the monthly dividends are a reason why I wanna increase that position. Another company's position that I wanna increase in my portfolio is Nvidia. This might be the one company that I'm gonna be focused on the most within the five or six that I've just mentioned. As a matter of fact, I've already made my first investment of the year in Nvidia. I think it was a little over $30. I think this is one of the most important tech companies out there right now, especially being a leader in processing video graphics cards, especially when it comes to AI and how society is slowly transitioning to it, starting with the sudden release of ChatGPT back, I believe, in the end of 2022. As a matter of fact, a lot of people expect that the market for artificial intelligence is going to be in the multi, multi, multi billions by 2030. And Nvidia can play a major role in that. Now this company is definitely not known for its dividend payouts. I think I personally made about 10 cents last quarter or last payout and that's owning a little bit over two shares. So it's definitely not known for that, but it is for sure known for its capital gains. And again, it has a lot to do with the sudden increase in demand for their GPUs back in 2022 to support hundreds of data centers, which were used for chat GPT. On top of the GPUs that are used in more, I guess, general uses such as PCs, laptops, and gaming consoles. Now, the one concern that I do have with this company, similar to Apple and to BOO, is the obsession with NVIDIA, especially nowadays, it's gonna be really high. So that means even if NVIDIA exceeds expectations based on what the market looks like, they may not exceed what our expectations may be. Like we may think this should be a thousand dollar share price by the end of March, but it only makes it to $900. So the share price goes down. I doubt that's gonna happen. It's just a bit more on the exaggerated side, but this is a position that I'm definitely going to buy more of so I can increase my overall profits for this year and the years to come. And the last position I wanna focus more on my money on is Costco. Costco is that essential based company that was really useful to especially during the pandemic time. I know it's definitely a benefit to shop there because they carry everything in bulk and they definitely make a lot of money with their memberships. And all of that and the additional revenue supports the fact that they've been able to consistently pay dividends to their shareholders. I think they've been able to increase it for the past 20 years and their consistent increase in share price. And speaking of dividend payouts, and I'm totally catching up, I don't care, I'll admit it. I had no idea that this company had a bonus dividend payout. As a matter of fact, I think at the beginning of this year, all shareholders are gonna receive a bonus of $15, which is an increase from what they gave out last year. That just means that not only do they have enough cash flow to pay their shareholders dividends, but they have more than enough to where they can increase it and also give a bonus out. So honestly, that's part of the reason why I want to focus more on Costco. One thing I did learn about this company as far as analytics, and hopefully I'll use these on other companies, is how they compare it to their own rivals. Some of their biggest rivals are Target and Walmart, and they actually lead in something called inventory turnover, and they've been leading in that since 2015. That basically just means their products spend the least amount of time in their store from when the inventory gets on the shelves to when somebody picks it up and buys it. And they also lead with similar competition in something called operating profit. To my understanding, it basically means how much money are they making on each of their products when they're sold? Because you have to spend money to actually create the product and then you sell it for a certain price, probably a little bit higher. How much are you actually making from that? I am really excited to invest more into that. The one concern I would have is that even though the price to earnings ratio in my novice opinion seems fairly healthy, the share price in comparison to its rivals is ridiculously expensive. So the question is, are they really that much better than their rivals? So 
something we can keep in mind. As you can see, for this year, I definitely want to build a portfolio that helps me make more in annual dividends in comparison to what I made last year. But I also want to have a balance of overall capital profits for the long term because just like a lot of you guys out there, the idea of putting money into something, waiting and pulling even more out is the whole reason why I wanted to start investing in the first place. And of course, the positions that I want to focus on this year may change over time because over time, hopefully I'll learn more about specific analytics and things to be on the lookout for because I want to make sure the $30 a week I'm investing into is going into the best companies that they can. And that's only five more dollars per week than what I was investing last year and the years prior. But in this video, I'm going to show you guys how big of an impact $5 can actually make over time when it comes to your dividend payouts and your overall capital gain. So hope you guys check that video out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I appreciate you guys watching as always. And until next time, take care.